Welcome back Welcome to another B-Movie Bash. B-Movie Bash. I'm Shannon. I'm Alyssa. And this week is not so mournful. No. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Well, I hope. I don't well, know. we'll mm, see. <laughs> maybe I should not speak too soon. We know now. We're going to... Uh, something's going on with our recordings, man. They're not... Yeah. We're also on a different mic and a different recording program this time. Yes. So, sorry in advance. Yeah. Or, uh... I don't know. Shannon's mic is better than mine, so... <laughs> we'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out. So before I get into my movie for the week, um, I wanted to kind of recap the other movie that yep. I watched this week okay. that I'm not talking about. Okay. Even I'm talking about the it one, right now. The one you were telling me about last night? Yes. Okay. So it Did you was, finish it? I did. Okay. It wasn't good, Okay. but it wasn't bad enough. Okay. So, um, it was made in 1999, and the graphics were not up to par. Okay. Like, if you could make dinosaurs in 1993 or 4, whenever Jurassic Park came out, uh-huh. you can make ghosts and things. <laughs> like, it was pretty bad. <laughs> They're basically, like, people under sheets going, hmm. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> like, there was this one scene where, like, I think it was supposed to be a child's ghost. It was supposed to be, like, creeping up through the sheets. Uh-huh. But it literally looked like... Like a cherub baby, like a mini person, like swimming under the sheets. It was real weird. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What, what one was that one? The movie? The movie, yes. It's called The Haunting. The Haunting. It came out in 1999, okay. and it actually had some big name people in it, like Liam Neeson, Catherine Seda Jones, Owen Wilson, and the mom from The Conjuring. Funny enough. Wait, is this, the, were they in like a house? It's Hill House. Hill House. Oh. You've seen it? It's a good thing I didn't do Dude, it. Dude, that one's so... Like, I I vaguely remember... Vaguely remember this one. Yeah. Vaguely. It's, like, not scary. No. And, but, like, I feel like... Like, if someone threw it on during spooky season... Uh-huh. And there were, like, people who didn't want to be scared, like, it'd be okay. Yeah. But it's not great. Did someone get thrown into a fireplace? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I do know this one. <laughs> I'm glad you... Like, a giant person-sized <laughs> yeah. fireplace? Yeah. I think that's why I have nightmares of giant fireplaces now, actually. That could so explain I everything. have just, like, the weirdest nightmares about fireplaces and having to find the key inside the fireplace. It's weird, man. So, I'm oh, glad you didn't talk about that. Because I, when you said that, I said, no, I don't know that one. Yeah. It's like, no. I wondered if you might. Like, this is just, like, that niche genre that she might have seen, but doesn't remember because it wasn't good. Yeah. It wasn't good. No. <laughs> that was the one that I was going to do, but okay. it was not bad enough. Like, yeah. I didn't hate myself at the end. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, the one I picked for this week is called American Poltergeist, Mm -hmm. and it came out in 2015. And what I didn't realize when I started is that there's a little twisty doodle to it that I think you're going to appreciate. A twisty doodle. I like twisty doodles. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this movie... Sorry for the sniffing. It's allergy season. It's bad, It's so bad. The pollen count here. Fuck my life. So... (laughs) Fuck my life out of 10. Yep. Speaking of ratings, this one has a 2.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Yes. And a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. No. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I watched this movie today, mm-hmm. and I just basically, like, frantically wrote notes while I was watching it, <laughs> and then didn't go back over my notes. <laughs> so, I never go back over my notes. This might be a little <laughs> messy, and I think I did too many details. That's okay. I give how many details do I talk about in my... It's true. I talk about too many details. Well, here we go. Okay. This is like five pages typed. Again. So let's hope we don't lose this footage. Yeah. (laughs) So it starts off with a black screen and words. Words. Aren't words just the best way way. to start? (laughs) So it's telling us that over the course of five days, this group of friends experienced one of the deadliest poltergeists in American history. Oh, okay. 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 And then it fades out. Okay. And then more words fade in. (laughs) (laughs) After a full investigation, there were no suspects. And it fades out. Oh, okay. And then it fades back in and oh. says, the case remained unsolved. This is their story. Dun, dun. Like, okay. Okay. What are we watching right, right? now? Like, yeah. in New York City, the dedicated detective. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> For real, though. I was like, Zach, this is their story. I quote it every time, I, every time I'm watching Law and Order. I look at Zach and just the say, dedicated yeah. detectives. <laughs> like, it means, like, stop it. I hate <laughs> you so much. <laughs> okay. It starts with 
Well, it doesn't start with, I guess. We already started, but yes. it starts with a flashback. Oh. We love a flashback. I love flashbacks. Like, flashbacks are only, like, I don't know when is a good flashback, but I will tell you when a good flashback is. Yeah. Like, that's... Well, this is one of those flashbacks that makes no fucking sense until the end of the movie. <laughs> okay. I hate those. I hate those. Like, at least give me context. Yeah. It's stupid. So, August 1992, oh. to set the scene. All right. There's a girl with a noose around her neck. Oh. And you can see that she's teetering on the edge of a chair. Okay. And she just keeps saying, I love you, over and over again. Okay. And you're like, okay. And it's like close up. It's like her face, her neck, the chair with her feet, and like these red eyes that you don't know who they belong to. <laughs> and you're like, okay. Okay. And then there's a baby crying and she steps off the chair. Okay. Okay. All right. So it, yeah. And then it goes to present day, but it doesn't say when that is. It's just so present. 2015, I guess. I guess. Sure. <laughs> 2021. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it cuts to a couple guys in a car, and they're talking about heading to this house. And, you know, one guy is like, oh, yeah, how did you find this place? Oh, yeah, my sister found it, and it's going to be super cheap for us to live there. And, like, the only weird thing is that the owner also lives there, and she's, like, pretty eccentric. Like, they use the word eccentric uh-huh. so many times. Okay. So she, like, <laughs> has her own bedroom, and then they share the rest of the house. Uh-huh. And then it cuts to day one. So apparently that wasn't part of day one, even though it definitely was. Okay. But so they pull into the drive and there's a few different cars. There's two guys and three girls and they're like looking at this place to see if they want to move in. Okay. And they talk about how cheap it is and like, um, they tell the, oh, like that jumps ahead. But they basically say that they want to move in right away. Cheap means haunted or yeah. serial killer. Yeah. Or like it's three twenty five a bucks. month per room in uh on the east coast. So I guess that's cheap. Sounds pretty cheap. Yeah, well then it's haunted by, by bugs. That's what's haunted, haunted by. by like, serial killer yeah. bugs. <laughs> I'm going to cut you up so bad. You know, wish I had cut you up so bad. So I'm just going to explain who the people are uh-huh. so that the rest of it kind of makes sense. Okay. So the two guys are Michael and Scott. Michael and Scott. Michael is um, the boyfriend. My- what? Michael, Michael Scott. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Scott is the religious one. Okay. Like, choke me. Oh, no. Don't <laughs> Like gag me. Gag He's the religious one. <laughs> Show me. Okay. This is starting this off. This movie well. got more fun. Okay. So Scott and Michael, mm-hmm. and then we have Nikki, who is Michael's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Taryn, who is Michael's older sister, mm-hmm. and then Jenna, who is just a, she's just there. Just Jenna. Yeah. Okay. She's just Jenna. Is Jenna the slut? No. Oh, surprisingly, is, is it Nikki? Kind of. Okay. But she's like, she's attached, I, so she's not a slut. I, I feel like they always give the sluts the name Nikki. Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to all but, the Nikki's out there, but yep. if you go by Nicole and not Nikki, you know why. Yep. <laughs> so, Taryn, like, pulls Michael aside, her brother, and is basically saying, like, I don't think we should move here, and, like, why are we so far away from campus? So, you know, they're college students. Uh-huh. And she's like, I don't want to miss out on the experience. And he's like, you're a fucking senior. Like, what experience are you missing out on? Yeah. And then she also comments on how she doesn't like his girlfriend, Nikki. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, she's good to me. So you just, I don't want any of your bullshit. Yeah. No, no, and that's it. Okay. So now we know that they don't like each other. All right. Um, surprise, surprise. Yeah. Two girls don't like each other. Weird. <laughs> so they go up and they knock on the door. And the woman who lives here. I mean this in, like, the best, worst way possible. She looks like an ex-porn star. <laughs> like, she's got, like, awful bleach blonde hair, like, big lips, weird makeup. Like, <laughs> it's it's a sight. <laughs> and she's also, like, weirdly stoic. Like, she walks around like she has a stick up her ass <laughs> and, like, doesn't talk right. I don't know. I, I have some quotes in here <laughs> that'll help. But, like, it was really weird. So she leads them around the house and they're kind of, like, poking around and one of these girls is taking a picture of an old cash register because she has, like, an old bar in her house and, like, mm-hmm. there's weird old shit all over the place. Okay. And as she takes a picture, the register pops open oh. and closes. Spooky. Very spooky. Oh. The owner, um, whose name is Diana, shows them the pool and the ju- and the jacuzzi, and she makes a note of saying that at its deepest, it's 15 feet. So you know someone's fucking dying in the pool. That, yeah, that's a fucking deep ass pool. Yeah. My like, okay. My normal pool is like six feet deep. Yeah. In the deepest part. Fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know what you're. That's a murder Competitive pool. like diving. Yeah. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> it was weird. But like just the way she says it, she's like, and this is our pool. It's 15 feet deep. You're like, okay, thanks okay. for that heads up. Yeah. Great. 
I even wrote, I'm guessing that'll come into play later. <laughs> so um, Nikki goes in to use the bathroom, and she, like, tries the door at first, and it doesn't work, and then she finally gets in there. And it's, like, one of those scenes where she, like, sits down, and it shows her peeing, and you're like, why is this why? important? Yeah. And there's a knock at the door, and she thinks it's her boyfriend. Uh-huh. So she's like, Michael, can't you just give me, like, two minutes? Oh, my gosh, Michael. <laughs> and um, Did she talk like that? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And then she comes out, and, like, the whole group has just come inside, so you know it wasn't Michael. Uh, well, at least it was a polite ghost. True. They yeah. knocked. It wasn't, yeah. like, scary. They didn't just, like, swing open the door and be like, hey, I see you peeing. They would have like, run right into her knees, because that was the smallest bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing weird today. No, yeah, you're good. I'm, I'm, like, losing my voice, so this is going to be a fun one. <laughs> So she, like, goes up to Diana, and she's like, um, you need to fix your handle in the bathroom. Like, that that's not really working. And the owner's just like, it gets stuck sometimes. Like, that's literally how she talks is the she, whole is movie. Is she possessed? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, she's like, yes, I am letting people move into my home Welcome. for $5 a month. <laughs> Please move We in. will kill you all. Yes. Like, <laughs> right? So, no ghosts. No. None. Not creepy. No. No. Just cheap. Very cheap. For college affordable. students. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's way weird. She's eccentric, yes. though, you know. So it's fine. <laughs> so she shows them upstairs, and um, two my, girls... Oh, sorry. sorry, my definition of eccentric is walking around, and I definitely didn't kill my ex-husband robes. See, I think like of, this. like, Professor Trelawney. Yeah. Like, just kind of, like, quirky. And like weird, weird. Yeah. And you're like, I don't want to spend too much time with you. Yeah. But you're not going to kill me. Yeah. yeah. No, they're just the weird ones that are like, oh, yes, and this is me and my stuffed ferrets around the house. Yeah. Aren't they so precious? This is oh. my weird cash register and my statues that make no sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, not sometimes it gets stuck in our 15 foot deep. <laughs> like what? Yeah, like the guy. She reminds me of you've seen Rocky Horror Picture. Yeah, right? like the like butler guy. Oh, and he's like talking like this the whole time. <laughs> You're like okay, <laughs> okay. So she's showing them their rooms. Two of the girls, Taryn and Jenna, share a room. Michael and Nikki share a room, and then Scott has his own room because mm, he's religious. You see. Yes, 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 and yeah. Woof. <laughs> So they walk into one of the girls' rooms, and she's just showing them around, and there's a few porcelain dolls. Mm -hmm. And this actually made me jump. I think it's because I have headphones on. Yeah. They don't hear it, but we get to hear children laughing. Oh, Isn't that nice? That's so fun. Fuck that. Yeah. (laughs) And it was just weird. There's multiple things that we hear, but they don't. Like, so you just threw that in there for shock value. For shock value. And there was so much, like, (laughs) darn it, like... (laughs) jump music and like if you're not making it scary via the movie yeah then you're not doing your job yeah no that the that is just to add the ambiance the extra mm-hmm. like it's to make the scare go further yeah not be the scare yeah like well, I there's, ooh, there's one good scare in here I yeah get, i'm so excited to tell you about oh it. man but <laughs> i also have a few pictures ooh. so sorry listeners but you can google it if you want <laughs> Maybe we can put them on the screen. Maybe, Ooh. yes. So in this room, there's the porcelain dolls. Yeah. And I think it's Taryn. She's like, oh, do you have a little girl? And she, the owner just goes, no, no kids. And like walks out of the room. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck is going on? She's fucking possessed, okay. man. She's definitely possessed by somebody. It was really weird. So <laughs> guys has got to be living inside of her. Right. Like, how do you live in this house by yourself and not get killed? Yeah, like, that's a good question. You know, you've got to be the possessed one. The one who can type a computer and post an ad. Like, yeah. Oh, um, type a computer. What the fuck? I don't know. I went with it. <laughs> um, I also need to mention <laughs> that the house is very, like, old East Coast house. Like, okay. it doesn't look specifically haunted, but uh-huh. it looks old, for oh, sure. Okay. Now yeah. we're on day two. Day two. Okay. okay. Five days. Yeah. Day two. Okay. Yep. This was like 10 minutes in the movie. <laughs> okay. So they all show up at their house and um, they start getting their things and moving in. And there's like a guy helping who borrowed his truck from work and that doesn't matter. But um, it brings up uh, Michael asking, hey, you better come to my girlfriend's birthday party this weekend because it's going to be a great birthday party. And he's like, yeah, totally. Blah, blah. So, you know, there's a party coming okay. up. Taryn goes upstairs and steals one of the porcelain dolls out of the room just like puts it in her bag and walks away uh okay great uh, fuck you then right like um i don't even remember if that ends up being her room or not so 
That's weird. That's so rude. Yeah. Like, fuck you. <laughs> is she a klepto? Like, do they have any... That does not come into play at all. No. D- does the doll come into play later? Not really. Okay. Yeah. So she just steals the doll. I mean, her. it kind of does, but not specifically. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Not that specific doll. Yeah. Okay. So Michael calls for Diana, and she, like, just shows up in the screen, like, out of nowhere, uh-huh. being all creepy. And um, he is trying to get into the basement because he has some equipment of some kind that he wants to store down there. Uh-huh. And um, does he was like, does this go to the basement? And she goes, I believe so. Like, this is your fucking house? This is your fucking house. She's you possessed. Mean? She's got a- She's possessed. Like, and, they- <laughs> and for the fact that they didn't play into that. Right. Like, do they not? No. 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 Okay, we've got a, we've got many. We got okay. We got we got three more days to go. Yes, we do. Okay. So he asks if she has a key, so he can put some stuff down there. And she says that it was locked when she moved in, so she has no key. So he's like, okay, I'll find somewhere else to store it, I guess. And he like walks away, and it focuses on Diana, and she's just like weirdly staring after them for a oh. long time. <laughs> And also in the background is like a um, like a sitting area where a mannequin is just chilling. Oh, no. And is there the whole time. No. Yeah. Man. Like, I don't, know I don't fucking do mannequins, man. Yeah. Like, it was really weird. Fuck me. Oh, it shows Nikki outside. She's bringing in a box and she's got her super short shorts on because oh. she's a Nikki. Because she's a Nikki. And she's like bending over and getting in the box. Doing hot girl shit. Yes. Yes. And a cop walks up. <laughs> oh. Because of course. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you're not from around here. Where are you? What are you doing? How long are you staying? And blah blah, blah. Uh-huh. and she just says that they're moving in i think until the end of the semester or something I and mean, then that's it that's the end of their conversation and then the cop leaves yeah it just cuts to inside okay yeah all right so it goes back to scott unpacking his room and he hangs a cross up on his corkboard oh, oh. and it's like the most intricate like <laughs> detailed cross i've ever seen in my life and then it goes to the girls unpacking and oh the, it's like breezy and windy and so i think it's taryn goes to close the window and the other one's like oh it felt so nice why did you do that and it cuts to someone like standing outside the window but all you can see is like the back shot like their back the silhouette yeah yeah that's the word (laughs) and so you can't tell who it is Uh and taryn's like well i have to lock all the windows and doors at night because you know it just makes me feel comfortable then she's like it's probably my helter skelter obsession i was like that's a really creepy obsession obsession. yeah i love true crime I'm not obsessed with Charles Manson. No. <laughs> she also takes the porcelain doll out of her bag, and she, like, doesn't even, like, display it. She, like, there's, like, a nightstand that has, like, one of those lower shelves, uh-huh. you know? And she just, like, puts it down there laying down. Okay. I don't know. All it was right. weird. Don't want to get caught with it. Yeah. Okay. And then it cuts to Diana, who is preparing dinner, and she's cutting le- lettuce with, like, the largest kitchen knife <laughs> you've ever seen in your life, of course. Okay. Um, and she sets it down next to her. And it starts to twirl around on the counter. Oh. And she just kind of, like, looks around, and that's it. <laughs> like, it was really weird. So she's, like, vaguely aware of this... Uh, whatever, I Whatever, guess, yeah. okay. And she brings the salad out to dinner, and everyone's waiting to eat. And she asks how they all know each other, and, like, they know each other through school, blah, blah, blah. There's a really loud thump, and all the kids get, like, super freaked out, because mm-hmm. it's, like, really loud. And Diana's like, oh, it's just the wind. You'll have to get used to it. <laughs> and you're like, no, bitch. No, bitch. It's not the wind. And then they um, cheers their wine to new beginnings and new friends and a new home. Okay. Super exciting. It goes back up to Karen and Jenna's room. And I think Jenna is like, so what do you think of Diana? Like, she's super eccentric, right? Like, so eccentric. I don't think they know the word, the meaning I, of that word. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. They need a thesaurus. Yeah. Um, I would just be like, she's odd, isn't she? She's yeah. a little odd. She's a little weird. She's a little weird. Yeah. Nice of her to make us fucking dinner. Right? But well, like, live here for cheap. <laughs> Even if it is, you know, possessed by serial killer bugs or whatever. <laughs> she's also like, why would she want to rent this place out to college students? And like, has all these questions. And maybe she's poor, right? Maybe she need help. Yeah. But you guys don't even fucking care. I'm sure she's a bitch later. But like, you don't even fucking know. You don't yeah. know her life. Don't you judge her. She's an ex-porn star. Yeah. She needs the money. She needs the money. But Taryn basically tells her that she's thinking too much and that they need to go to bed. Like, she's just like, silence, bitch. You're going to sleep. <laughs> It's bedtime. But what's really weird is these two girls not only share a room, but they share a bed. They just sleep opposite directions of each other. <laughs> like, why? Like, like, like foot to mouth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like a queen size bed, so, like, it's fine, yeah. but, like, no. You mean to tell me that there weren't more rooms in the house? I guess not, and it's a big fucking house. <laughs> 
So I don't understand. Maybe they couldn't afford the full three twenty five. Maybe. So that I mean, I've been there, done that, but like true. So it shows them sleeping and there's a knock at the door. And half asleep, Taryn's just like, Come in Like why? Why? No. No. So the door opens but nobody's there. What? And then the T V turns on and it's <gasps> on static. Because they can't decide what channel they want to watch. No. And then she hears a lot of thumping from upstairs. So she turns off the TV and she goes upstairs to investigate. And um, she like walks through the kitchen and sees the lettuce knife. And so she grabs it and walks off. <laughs> and she goes into one of the guy's rooms. And his window is open. So she closes it. Uh-huh. And then behind her in the hallway is like a terrible shadow silhouette of someone holding a hatchet. <laughs> Like, it's, it doesn't even look like a real person was, like, standing there. It was pretty bad. Yeah. So she, after she closes the window, she, like, goes out of the room and comes down the stairs, and the basement door opens in front of her. So, of course, she decides to go down to the basement that was locked. When doors fucking open in front of you, no. 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 In a creepy house. Yeah. Yeah. That's white people shit. Yeah. It is. And they all were. So, (laughs) there you go. So she goes downstairs, and as she's, like, looking around with her flashlight, she sees two dead bodies on the floor that are, like, chopped up Oh, quite a bit. Okay. And she freaks out and drops the flashlight, and then when she turns it back on, the bodies are gone. Okay. But she sees Nikki off, like, around the corner a little bit, just standing there staring with a hatchet in her hand. Oh, okay. And Taryn doesn't even, like, think anything of it. She's just like, oh... You must be sleepwalking. I'm here to help you. Let's get back upstairs. Not that I totally just saw something right there. Right? And she, like, drops the hatchet on the floor when Taryn is helping her. So it's not like she didn't see it. Yeah. I don't understand. So she takes Nikki back up to Michael's room and, like, awkwardly lays her, like, sideways in bed. Uh. And she's just laying there with her eyes open. Uh. Like she's in a trance or something. Uh. (laughs) She goes back to her room and puts the knife by the side of her bed. And... I don't know. I didn't catch it, but she, like, it shows her looking in the corner of the room, but there's, like, a head-shaped... It's like it's looking from behind her head. Uh-huh. So you can't actually see the corner of the room. Okay. And then she, like, freaks out. So I don't know So you don't what see what she... Okay. Unless I just missed it, but uh-huh. I did not see it. Well, I, I hate when movies do that sometimes. They're like, well, we can't think of anything spooky enough for you to see... We're just going to have them scream. We're just going to have them scream for no reason. And, and I get sometimes less is more. Yeah. I'm totally okay with the movies where you can't see what's going on yeah. kind of a thing. But you can't fucking just, like, have somebody turn around and be like, oh, what is that? And oh, my nothing. God. And then they die. Like, yeah. And then you don't get to see it ever. No. Again. Yeah. No. That's. It's dumb. That's cheap shit. That's okay. Canada movie set cheap shit. No offense, Canada. Mm. You're pretty cool. You're pretty cool. Just cheap. <laughs> okay. So now it is day three. Oh. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. So Nikki and Michael are hanging out by the pool uh-huh. and they're taught like at first they're like totally fine. They're talking about like how great it is. That they finally get to move in together and like they get to live together and it's so great. So great. And then there's like a beat and he's like, oh, I think it's time for you to go swimming. I think I'm going to push you in the pool <laughs> because, you know, that's what all boyfriends do. They don't. Girlfriends don't like that. Yeah. And they she don't. was like, I'm strong enough. I'm going to push you in the pool. And they, like, go back and forth for an uncomfortable amount of time. <laughs> and then Taryn comes over and is like, hey, I need to talk to you, Michael, like, in private, come into the house. So she goes in the house with him. And, oh, before it cuts to them, Jenna comes outside and is taking pictures because apparently she's the photographer. Maybe okay. that's what her thing is. Okay. She, like, takes a picture of Nikki by the pool. And then she, like, slowly turns her head back toward the house. Uh-huh. Ooh, picture time. I have a picture. Let me get to it. Picture time. So she slowly turns her head toward the house. It doesn't it, react. Is it as bad as Typhoid Mary? Oh, it's pretty bad. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to describe it first. Okay. So she sees what they later call the lady in the blue dress. Okay. Mm-hmm. So for everybody who can't see, you know, it's Spirit Halloween, <laughs> how there's that one wig that's like red and black and it's short and choppy and it flips out like everybody knows what wig i'm talking about right (laughs) it's like that and then the person has a white face with like blacked out eyes and they're wearing an old tiny white button-up shirt with like a little blue ascot tie Uh thing on top and a blue skirt okay okay that's not a blue dress nope sure is not i would be like Got to put that into the video. 
<laughs> yeah, it's bad. <gasps> so she turns and takes a picture of it, and I think in the moment you can't even see that, like, it doesn't capture on the camera. Yeah. And then she, like, looks down at her camera, and then she looks back up, and it's gone. It's gone. Ooh. Yeah. Very creepy. <laughs> Sorry. So there's the intro to the to the the creepy creep yes so then it cuts to taryn and michael and she's talking about how um nikki was sleepwalking last night uh-huh. not sleep murdering but sleepwalking sleepwalking and um she was like does she have a problem with that and he's like well she's done it a few times and then she says she found nikki in the basement and he's like well that's impossible because there's no fucking key to the basement so yeah. what are you talking about and she keeps saying that she thinks something weird in this house brought nikki here and like brought her to the basement and stuff. Okay. So then Michael goes to say that his that Nikki has a, a sleeping disorder and that she shouldn't be using this as an excuse to move back to campus. Okay. Like, okay. We're um, gonna jump to that conclusion. All right. Well, that you move back to campus. Yeah. We're gonna stay here. You move back to campus. Yeah. Like why? Fuck off. Know, like, really weird. <laughs> he like jumps to some weird conclusions. Okay. Overreactions. <laughs> So I, I that's why I really hate when they try to write brother sister like mm-hmm. siblings. They don't Dynamics. do siblings very spouses. I feel like they do spouses really well. Yeah, but they don't do siblings very well. Yeah. Like it's always like they're too, too close. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're too close or they're too much animosity. Yeah, or it's it's weird. It's very. I just don't like. It. It's, it's not good. They do siblings really weird in movies, man. And by they we mean every horror person. Ever. Oh yeah. Um, so Michael goes back out and joins Nikki by the pool. Scott has been bar- barbecuing food for everyone, so they all sit down to eat, and Diana comes out with them. And Jenna asks Diana who the lady in the blue dress is, and Diana's like, "What lady? I don't know what you're talking about." Like, and Jenna was just like, "Is it like a caretaker? Like, who is it?" And she wasn't trying to be weird. She was uh-huh. just like, "Oh, who's that lady?" And um, Michael gets like after her, and he's like. Oh, you're bringing up spooky stuff too? Like, oh, don't try to do this bullshit. Like, he gets really angry okay. about supernatural stuff. Someone's pent up. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody should be pushed in the pool. Right? <laughs> so she, like, tries to pull up her camera to prove it, but she can't find any pictures. Mm-hmm. And then Taryn is being, like, spicy at this point, and she tries to ask the history of the house. And Diana says that her husband left it to her in his will, and she doesn't really know much about it. And when she tries to ask more questions, Michael's like, stop interrogating her. So she goes, inside and just leaves okay so all right fine. yeah wait diana doesn't care this. uh taryn leaves okay yeah so after dinner it cuts to diana and she's like in her room looking at um some pictures uh-huh and she hears a thumping coming from upstairs and there's like a hallway behind her in her bedroom and there's like so i don't remember if like her door was open or like what but it was where there was mm-hmm. like a hallway and it was flickering like the light was flickering and um it just does this super weird thing so she hears the thumping and she like looks up but she like leans all the way back in her seat <laughs> to look up at the ceiling. And you're like, what is well, going on with I you? I can see the ceiling. Yeah. I got really it. Like <laughs> she just like kept leaning. <laughs> Um, but then she hears the doorbell ring, so she gets up to go and answer it. And this is the editing part that I told you is my favorite. Okay. So behind her, where the lights are flickering, a shadow walks across. Uh-huh. But in order for them to make sure you know that, they zoom in on the hallway. And they're like, and you're like, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was, it was really bad. If you have to make sure that I look by doing that, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. At the door is the police chief, and he said that he's just checking in because he saw the college kids moving in, and he, she, he asks if she's, like, renting out the rooms. And her answer is, yes, we could all use the company. Okay, bitch. Okay. Haunted bitch. Haunted bitch. And then he's like, do they know what happened in this house? And she says no. <laughs> and um, she was like, they don't need to know that yet. And he goes, they're going to find out sooner or later, and they're going to want to leave. And she's like, no, they're not going to leave. They're home now. <laughs> Like, oh, my God. Uh, Red flags. Red flags, police officer. Red flags. And then he says, so you think one of them is the kid? Yeah. And she says, we have no doubts. And then he leaves and says that he'll be, like, close. Is is this a cult? Hmm? Okay. (laughs) I can't tell you anything. Okay. We're on the end of page two. Okay. Okay. (laughs) End of day three, right? Pretty close. Okay. The kids get... Oh, so earlier in the story, they mentioned that they want to go to the lake. I <coughs> didn't put that in. So they get back from the lake, and yeah, they're, like, cool. kind of drunk. What are you lake for? Right? Yeah. So they're talking about how they're going to go to bed, but they want to go to the grocery store in the morning to get food and stuff. And Michael's just like, oh, yeah, who wants to go? And Michael, of course, is like, well, I have church in the morning, so oh. I won't be there. <laughs> like, we get it. We get it. Thanks. You're religious. Like, yeah. short... Was- 
bad. So short. Choke me, it was bad. <laughs> so short of carrying a Bible around. Yeah, like, pretty much. Okay. Um, and then it cuts to Diana, who is taking a bath with, like, candles all around her. And she's just, like, jerking and twitching and writhing in the water. And then it, like, does a wider shot so you can see, like, that weird hallway that's in her room. Uh-huh. And the woman in the blue dress is standing in the hallway. With that horrible way. Dun, dun, yeah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Um, it then cuts to, oh, this is like nighttime. Obviously, they got back from the lake and they're going to bed. Um, it cuts to Taryn, who's having a nightmare um, of what we saw in the beginning. So the woman, like, hanging herself, uh-huh. the red eyes, the baby crying. But then also she sees the people's bodies who were in the basement. Uh-huh. And she, like, wakes up screaming. And so Jenna is, like, trying to comfort her and wake her up and stuff. And she's like, I know something happened in this house. And she, like, has bruises on her arms. Okay. Yeah. Spooky. Yeah. And... I think at that point, uh, like, the rest of the people, or at least her brother comes in and, like, tries to figure out. Because she, like, woke up screaming. Uh Uh-huh. And he's like, you were just dreaming. Like, nothing's happening. And she's like, look at the fucking bruises on my arms. Like, they were, like, full forearm, like, bruises. She's like, they'll start to show up. So, he won't listen to anything for shit. (laughs) And then it cuts to day four. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Michael comes through the house, tells Taryn that he's going to go shopping, and um, she said that she's going to stay home because she's doing research after what happened last night. Okay. And he's like, nothing fucking happened. It was just a dream. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, well, do you want anything from the store? And she was like, can you get me some sage? And he's like, like the spice? She's like, no, the kind you burn, you idiot. <laughs> do you, can you just buy that from the grocery store? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. He doesn't. <laughs> okay. So, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. He does not bring back Sage. <laughs> so everyone leaves, and she, like, waits to hear the cars, like, pull away. And um, she, like, walks out to one of the brooms that has, like, a big bay window up front so she can make sure they're gone. Uh-huh. And behind her, the basement door opens. Ooh. dun 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 dun, dun. Um, she goes down, because of course she does, uh-huh. and she finds an old metal box with a crowbar next to it. Oh. She opens it, and there's, like, pictures and, like, a newspaper clipping and a smaller box. And she, like, is starting to look through it, but she hears a noise upstairs. So she's like, shit, maybe they're back for something. Uh-huh. She closes the box, takes it with her, and goes upstairs to her room. Okay. And they're not back. Uh-huh. So she starts looking through it again, and she finds pictures of the people that she saw dead in the basement. Oh, there's a thumping on in the house, and her doorknob starts moving on its own. Okay. So she takes the knife, and she opens the door, and there's no one there, so she closes it again. And then she sits down and starts looking through the stuff. Uh-huh. And there's, like, pictures of a woman holding a baby... There's a news article that's like, police officer saves baby, blah, and you can't really see much of uh-huh. anything. And it's so weird, because, like, she's talking to herself the whole time, and as she's looking at some of the pictures, she's like, you know you've seen this before. You've seen this picture before. And I was like, what is happening? What is ha- why are you talking to yourself like that? Yeah, it was really weird. Why would you say you've seen this before? Right? I would have been like, I know I've seen this before. Yeah. Like, really she's, weird. like, trying to convince herself, you've seen this before. You yeah. had to have. You, you fucking Definitely, know. yeah. If you haven't, you're a dumb bitch. Like... <laughs> oh, at one point, she's, like, looking through stuff, and, like, the curtains of the window, like, flow and, like, touch her. But it looks so, like, they obviously used something to move it, and it, like, it just looks really bad. <laughs> like, they didn't even CG it. So she closes the window. So so the ghosts are, like, barely haunting her. They're yeah, just, they're like, just like, hey, what's up? Yeah. So here, here's where the twisty doodle comes into play. Okay. Okay. So she's looking through the newspaper clippings, and one of the other ones she sees is um, an article talking about the Borden murders. No fucking way. Yeah. Didn't know this was coming up. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Are you trying to tell me that this is like a Lizzie Borden bullshit thing? No. (laughs) Okay. Just so everyone knows, we're hopefully doing a different Lizzie Borden movie soon. Hopefully. So that's why it's a twisty doodle. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, she looks in the smaller box and there's like a couple photographs and then she pulls out. You can't even fucking tell what. Okay. It's just like very cursive writing. She doesn't even open it all the way. First uh-huh. of all, she like starts to unfold it and you can see vital records on the top. So I thought it was like a death certificate or uh-huh. something. But we find out later what it is. Okay. Because she can't read shit in she- the moment. <laughs> and then she, like, starts freaking out and is like, no, this can't be. What is this? This can't be. Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay. Okay. What can't be? <laughs> um, and then she falls onto her bed and just starts sobbing. But she's there for, like, ten seconds. Which, like, doesn't seem that long. But in movie time, that's, that's a, a long, long time. time. Yeah. 
Yeah, like Disney princess throw herself on the <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like she was sitting and so she just went like, <laughs> and like threw herself sideways, but still. Okay. So while she's crying, everyone comes home. Or mate, no, just Diana comes home and she goes up to her and she's like, you bitch, you knew all along, didn't you? <laughs> You're like, are you going to tell us? Well, you know. Well, you like, know? Yeah, like, like, knew all along what? Like, yeah. oh, sorry, you know, I actually um, did put salt in the salad the other so day. So sorry. Sorry. I lied. Oh. It's actually a 14-foot pool. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like, okay. Um, there were kids in the house. <laughs> oh, surprise. Surprise. So Diana, in response to that, is like, let's go upstairs and talk. If I were like, bitch, you're a fucking liar to me, I would not be going nowhere with you. Right? And be like, oh, yes, let's go talk calmly in yeah. another place. In that another sounds place. great. No. We don't need secondary locations. No. No. Let's go, you fucking talk right here. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Do you have things to show me that are up there? Then I'll go up there. But no, if, you got, if you're just going to talk to me, we talk right here. Yeah, and no one's home. So, no, like, no. bitch, what? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off. So, they go up there. Okay. And in Diana's room, um, there's, like, a full-blown, like, mirror wall behind her bed. Uh-huh. Like, that's kind of, like, her headboard. And across the room, you can see the lady in the blue dress. So, oh, wait. So, Diana has a full-blown mirror wall as a... She is a porn star. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm telling you. <laughs> But the lady's in the the reflection. Yeah. Okay. She's like in the corner of the room. Yeah. So you can't see her directly, but you see the reflection. Mm Mm-hmm. Taryn says that Diana's husband was also her father, John Borden. What? Yeah. What? And um, Diana's like, John didn't have any children. You were his only child. So, bitch, what? What? Why are you speaking out of both sides of your mouth? Yeah. Yeah. But she's like, so that makes me your stepmother. What? What? I don't know. It goes on. Um, and then, oh, are we talking reincarnation? Is that what we're talking about? No. No? No. Okay. So. <laughs> I need to watch this movie. It's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> um, and then Taryn goes, so this is why you reached out to me about the house. Like some lady reached out to you and said, hey, I'm renting my rooms for real cheap. Why don't you come stay in them? And you took that? Why? Why? Serial killer who? You're a dumb bitch. Right? Like, <laughs> like what? When I heard that, I was like, oh, my God. What's, that's like somebody being like, oh, hey, you know, we're looking for a, uh, uh, we take donations for body parts. We were wondering if you'd be interested in yeah. coming and, you know, giving us a, a kidney or something. No big deal. Like, yeah. what? Here's a classified ad. Yeah. We're, we're legit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So she goes on to say that she found the newspaper and the birth, certi- birth certificate. Oh. So it's her actual birth certificate. Okay. And then she says that... I wouldn't have started crying. I probably would have been like, what the fuck? Right. And like, if that... So, okay. So she tells Diana, who knows all of this, okay. obviously, that she was abandoned in this house in 1992 on the 100th anniversary of the Borden murders. So it's not directly like... Lizzie Borden's dad, okay. but it's like the descendants of oh, okay. the Bordens. So she was the baby crying. Yeah. Okay. And she's like, my grandparents were murdered in the basement and my mother hung herself on these curtains right here. It's very dramatic. Okay. And then... Um, and, and she was aware of that before? No, I think she found it out by digging through the box. By digging through the box. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. And then uh, up until then, I think she was just like creeped out. Okay. Taryn asks, they keep it between the two of them. And then a door slams. And Taryn's like, I can't stay here anymore. I have to leave. Something bad is going to happen. And she walks away and Diana just like smiles after her all creepily. Okay. So everyone else got home and she tells them that she's leaving. And like, she's like, I am out of here. I'm leaving right now. And she's like running through the living room. And the only reaction any of them has is Nikki, who says, but what about my party tonight? Like, bitch, you're not even going to ask why. Why? No. So she goes up to her room and starts, like, packing up her stuff. And we see her from the doll's perspective. And it starts the giggling that Uh only we can hear for some reason. Okay. Um, And then she leaves the porcelain doll just, like, laying in the middle of the floor. Okay. And I don't know. All right. I also made the note, this is only halfway through the movie. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I'm expecting, like, crescendo of everything to be happening right now. Right? Like, you can't leave the house. Yeah. Like, So she tries to start her car, but oh, it won't start. Of course not. So she runs in, and she asks Michael to borrow his keys, but his car won't start. So she asks Scott for his keys. Uh-huh. His car won't start either. The police chief walks by and asks if everything's okay. And she's like, oh, it's just car problems. And Why like, is the police sure? chief? Like, okay, this just, like, gotta walking be, like, by the house. Just, like, walking by the house. Yeah. Right? He's got it. Okay. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But yeah, she's like, it's just car problems. And he's like, are you sure? And you're like, what the fuck are yeah. you doing? What do you mean? Yeah. Officer. 
And she just walks away from him and goes inside. And she tells the group that none of the cars will start. And Michael's just like, we'll take him to a mechanic in the morning. We have to do the party tonight. Like, we, we'll, we'll figure it out in the morning. And she's like, it'll be too late. We can't do that. <laughs> but then they convince her to stay because what else is she going to do? Yeah. Besides walk. Yeah. Okay. So it cuts to um, the group uh, setting up for the party by the pool. Mm-hmm. And they're waiting for the other guests to arrive. And Diana asks how many party guests they're going to have. So she was like, well, it's going to be us and then five other people. Blah, 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 blah. Great. Okay. okay. That's not a, really a party. <laughs> no. I think she says that it was like last minute or because they were so far away from town or something like okay. that. Okay. Like, I guess that makes she sense. She was like, I didn't get many RSVPs. Okay. Okay. Maybe you're a bitch, Nikki. So the doorbell rings and Nikki runs around the pool to answer it. And she like doesn't slip, but she like runs around a little like scary, you uh-huh. know, like she's not doing so well and like you know almost loses her step Mm -hmm. and michael comments that she's gonna fall in that pool one day like okay okay so she's gonna die right she's gonna die yeah so nikki goes and lets the friends in and i think it's two guys and three girls Mm -hmm. and it's like sickeningly fake how she's greeting these people it doesn't matter but Uh like she's like oh my gosh i'm so glad you made it like she's one of those girls and one of her friends who like seems like more of her best friend comes in with cake and champagne she's like oh my gosh my favorite cake and champagne welcome in come into my home and it's just like okay <laughs> weird that you have to say that yeah that's, that's weird i hate it that's um, weird <laughs> so she lets them in and she shows them to the guest house where they're going to be staying one oh, of the, so they're staying the night some of them okay and one of the friends is like wow how'd you score this place and she, uh nicole's talking about like how cheap it is and stuff and um, i'm surprised diana is like okay with them having a party right? yeah. like okay <laughs> anything to get weirdo Taryn to live in the house right so i also didn't take note of any of the names of the friends so they're just like the other friend the other so friend. sorry about that's that that's fine <laughs> so the friend is talking about how cheap this place the movie is gave them names. right so <laughs> and um another friend chimes in and says yeah not bad for a murder house <laughs> okay okay and, yeah and nikki's just kind of like what and so her friend is like well yeah when you texted me the address i thought it was a sick joke like my mom is so worried that we're here for a party and nikki had no idea what they were talking about at all and then one of her other friends (laughs) this was so poorly scripted it hurt my soul okay (laughs) she says um i tried to get more friends to come but everyone tends to sit tight on the eve of august 4th here in fall river in providence like that's the most explainy wordy like the exposition yeah dump right so there bad. okay yeah and nikki still doesn't know what they're talking about so they explain that um there's the urban legend of lizzie uh lizzie borden who killed her parents and comes back every august 4th to like haunt the place or do whatever uh-huh. and that's tomorrow well i'm just saying if she's coming back tomorrow you got nothing to worry about today right like, you're fine you're fine like she ain't here. Yeah. They also explained that in 1992, which was 100 years later, uh-huh. and, you know, the anniversary, the murders happened again. And there's a rumor that um, there's a Borden girl still alive in the area. And then they're all like, ha ha, if we see her, we got to run the other way. <laughs> yeah. So they're like all serious and spooky about it. And then like laugh about it okay um one of the other like the new guy friends knocks on the door and he's like are we gonna go party or what and they all like jumped and screamed when he knocked on the door because they were creeped out and nikki was like sorry there's just been a lot of weird stuff going on here and she was like but now it's time to party like let's just go party and one of the friends is like yeah and she's like holding up a bottle of champagne she's like bring it on lizzie fucking borden why would you ever (laughs) why would scream that (laughs) What is wrong with you? I want to start screaming that every time we have a party that's never a party because <laughs> we don't party. Like, every time we do water shots. Yes. Yeah, like, bring it on. Bring it on, fucking Lizzie Borden. Yeah. But like, why are you why are you yelling at me? I need to watch this movie now. It's, it's pretty bad, but like, um, not horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's the movie that we watched that had no background sound? Forget me not. It's kind of like that one. Where like, it's bad the whole time. Yeah. But like, you can watch it. You can watch it. Yeah. Okay. Alright. It cuts to Taryn in her room and she's on the computer again and and then it goes back to one of Nikki's friends who was doing a line of coke in the guest house. Oh, okay, because you so know. So it's getting real crunk up in here. I don't even know where to get coke. Like, no. I don't know where to get drugs. No. no I don't. No. I don't, no. Like, that'd be so awkward walking up to some of my friends and be like, hey, I want some weed. Hey, so drugs. Drugs. Great. How do I get them? Like, yeah. I don't even fucking know, man. Like, um, it cuts back to the main party and Nikki is asking Michael if 
that he believes that it's a murder house because all the girls are just telling her about this stuff. Uh-huh. And again, he gets really upset and is like, stop spreading rumors. Stop talking about all this stuff. So he's mur, just mur, like... Mur, mur. <laughs> it's just like anti-everything. Anti-everything ghost. Okay. Yeah. So they kind of get into a fight over it. And then Jenna comes up to Taryn's room and she's like, yeah, they're fighting. I think I'm done with the party. Like, I just don't want to be down there. And then she asks Taryn where she's planning on going when she leaves the house. And Taryn says she doesn't want to talk about it. You're like, okay. Okay. And then Jenna's like, well, one of Nikki's friends has a car and she isn't staying the night. So maybe she can give you a ride when Uh she leaves. And Taryn was just like, it's too late. And then it cuts to the window again, and there's a silhouette of a person, but this time you can see, like, the flippy, awful wig (laughs) in the silhouette. It's pretty great. After that, Michael goes into the bar in the house Mm -hmm. and pours himself a shot and then just, like, fucking passes out (laughs) on the bar. Okay. And across the room is the lady in the blue dress, Uh because of course. Because of course. Nikki is out at the party, and she decides to call it a night, and she's like... Scott's not talking to me. I'm probably going to get the... Not Scott. Michael's not talking to me. I'm probably going to get the silent treatment. I'm drunk. Like, I'm going to bed. And then Scott, who is wearing swim shorts, but also a very long cross necklace, (laughs) says that he's going to bed, too, because he has youth mentoring in the morning. (laughs) He's like, we get it! We get it! You're fucking religious! And as someone who is a somewhat religious person, fuck that, man. Yeah. It was a lot. (laughs) Um, and then it cuts to Diana, who is in bed, writhing and twitching, and the lady in the blue dress is at the bottom of her bed. Okay. Some of the other friends stay out by the pool, and they, like, slowly kind of drift off and go to bed until there's two people left, and they're, like, obviously, like, yeah, we're gonna go have sex. Uh, uh-huh. we're so- she, like, touches his leg as she walks away, and he's like, oh, yeah, here yeah. we go. It's like, okay. That was probably really loud. Um, <laughs> Headphone warning. Yep. And then the one who's planning on leaving it shows her, like, getting dressed, and she gets a phone call from her mom. Uh-huh. And she's like, no, mom, I'm fine. Lizzie didn't whack me with an axe. Don't worry. And you're like, okay, well, here we I go. I hope she does now. <laughs> I hope she whacks you with an axe. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. One of Nikki's was other Was that friends. the same one that said, bring it on? No. Me. Okay. No, this was the one that was like, no one likes to be outside <laughs> on the eve of August the 4th, 1992. <laughs> one of Nikki's friends goes up and bangs on, on her bedroom door and is like, hey, can I stay with you tonight? And she doesn't answer. And so she turns around and Nikki is like down the hallway facing away from her, just staring. Uh-huh. And she was like, oh my gosh, I was looking for all over for you. You scared me. And then she's like, okay, I'm going to bed. And just, like, leaves Nikki in the hallway and goes in her bedroom. Which is like, bad friend. Okay, yeah. Fuck you. It cuts back to the friend who's leaving. And she notices that she's being followed by Diana and the woman in blue. Okay. She, like, at first she just hears sounds and she's like, okay, it's not funny, guys. Uh-huh. You know, like, blah, blah. And then she's in, like, it's like the side of the house. It's almost like an alley. And there's, like, a gated door at the end. Uh-huh. And they are at the other end, like, coming after her. Uh-huh. Oh, I think I have a picture for this one, too. And um, I love these. I love the pictures, man. <laughs> I get excited. Um, I need to start including pictures, too, man. But my, it's my, fun. I need, to pick, I need to pick dumber movies. Oh, no, I don't have a picture for that one yet. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. So Diana runs after her and is, like, doing a crazy, like, crazy face. And the woman in blue just stands back there with the hatchet. Like, she doesn't move. <laughs> It, so friend dies, most yeah. likely. Okay. A friend going home dies. Okay. It cuts back to Nikki, who is now sitting in a doorway, just like staring off. It's like an under the stairs closet door. Uh-huh. And um, the lady in blue walks up to her, and she's still in her trance, but she's she goes, you weren't invited to my party. <laughs> and then she gets like sucked back into the darkness, <laughs> and the door closes. I wonder why Nikki's the one being so like entranced, right? I think. Like you think it would be like Taryn. Yeah. You know? Mm. You would think. Is it is it because Nikki's supposed to be the dumb one? Maybe. Okay. She's the hoe. The hoe. Except she's not really. <laughs> so then the actual like slutty friend who was gonna sleep with that guy or so it seemed is walking across the parking or the property and she sees Diana and the lady in blue standing off to the side and she gets like startled and so she starts to run away from them, but she trips. Uh-huh. Because that's what you do. You do. And an unknown force, like, pulls her to them. Okay. Then, the, like, fuckboy guy um, is hanging out in the sauna in the guest house. This Uh is apparently a very nice house. Uh Uh-huh. And he goes to get out, but he can't because the door is locked. Okay. And so he's, like, pushing and banging on the door, trying to get out. And then it cuts to this through the window. (laughs) So he sees Diana and the lady in blue. (laughs) 
<laughs> staring at him through the window of the sauna. Okay. Then it cuts to another guy who is like so drunk he can barely stand or walk. <laughs> and across the pool from him, he sees Diana and the lady in blue. Uh huh. And he's just kind of like, okay. And uh-huh. he like walks the other way down that same like side yard. Uh huh. And he walks all the way up to the gate and then realizes he found the body of that other girl. Uh And her eyes are, like, blacked out and her mouth is, like, hanging open. (laughs) And they did a pretty good job with that. Okay. He turns around and Diana is, like, right behind him. And he sees... Well, this was the scene of her, like, getting him. (laughs) So her eyes are starting to go creepy and she's got, like, cracks, veins on her face. (laughs) All right. Yep. And so he dies, apparently. And it also shows... That the lady in blue is now up on the balcony again. Or, like, through an upper floor window. Uh-huh. So she's just teleporting all over she's the just, place. Yeah, going crazy. Okay. Taryn wakes up and because she heard something and she wakes up Jenna. And their bedroom door slams shut. There's, like, a tall clock beside their door. And as they're trying to, like, open it, the clock, the hour hand is pointing to three. Uh-huh. But the minute hand is just spinning. Spinning. Okay. Yeah. They finally get out. And they are, like, running through the house. And there's, like, doors slamming all over the place. And they look out the patio door where the pool is and they see Diana and the woman in blue. And Taryn explains to everyone that Lizzie possesses people in the house and that she wants to kill everybody and she's using them to get to her. Okay. Um, Yeah. And she explains that Michael's parents adopt her because she's like, I'm the last living Borden. And I think it was Scott was like, that doesn't make sense because he's not a Borden. Yeah. And she was like, his parents adopted me when I was eight. Like, fucking eight. Yeah, eight. What were you doing? That's a long ass time. Yeah. Yeah. And Michael, of course, gets very upset. And he's like, no, that's not true. You're not adopted. Meh. And you're like, okay. Okay. Is he supposed to be the older sibling? No, he's the younger sibling. Oh, okay. That would make sense because yeah. I was like, but you would have lived part of your life yeah, without, without her. her. Okay. But also, doesn't that make her like way fucking older than him? Because she's supposed to be a senior in college. Is he like a freshman? I don't know. But he's just in he college. Is? Math. Uh. I mean, if he was, like, three when she got adopted, like, maybe he wouldn't remember. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, I don't remember shit from when I was five. Right? The only thing I remember is that one trip to Disneyland. That's it. I just remember the stuff in pictures. I'm like, yeah, "Yeah, that's a memory. Yep. For sure. Yep. So Michael gets upset and he tries to go out the patio door, but it won't open. And so they start talking about how they need to work together to get out and they need to check all the doors and windows um, to find a way out. And what's funny is they're like, okay, we need to work together. Let's split up and check all the doors. <laughs> um, I love the stay together, guys, but split up and go. Yeah. Like, and then Scott starts talking about how he knows this is a demon and how, like, someone must have invited it into the house and it's going to try to possess Taryn and it will jump from body to body to get there. And you're like, okay, Scott. Okay. Like, okay, how Catholic, do you know that? sir. Yeah. How do you know that? Yeah. And so Michael is like, well, you have to do an exorcism. And he's like, no, I can't do that. And he's like, yes, you fucking can. <laughs> Go get a holy water and Bible and cross. You just have the holy water. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know. Because. Catholics. Catholics. I guess. Do you all carry holy water around? I don't, I don't know. And then... I think it's Jenna who realizes that Nikki, someone re- realizes that Nikki isn't with them. Uh-huh. So Michael freaks out and goes to look for her. Taryn runs into the basement, of course, uh-huh. and grabs the crowbar that was on the floor and the hatchet that Nikki dropped. Uh-huh. Scott goes around looking for a way out, but it was funny because he like goes into the bedrooms and he like just pushes against the windows. They're like slide up windows. Uh-huh. And he just like pushes on them and he's like, it won't open. And he goes <laughs> to the next one. I'm like, dude. <laughs> Oh, man, then, I love them. Just the bang on... They don't bang on the doors. They bang on the door frames. You know, yeah. like, it does well. Quality. Quality. And then Taryn tries to break the windows with her hatchet, and it just, like, bounces off. Like, nothing is getting through these windows. Because, <laughs> you know, they slide. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the girls come across um, the woman in blue who's in the house now. Mm-hmm. And it shows Scott grabbing his cross and it's holy water. And so the girls run into um, another room and they, like, try the windows. And as they're, like, walking across this room, they find one of Nikki's friends dead in the bed. The one who's just like, peace out, Girl Scout. Yeah. And go to sleep. And then they couldn't get the windows open, so they go downstairs and no one has been able to find a way out. Uh-huh. Michael says that he also hasn't find Nick- found Nikki. And then, like, I don't remember how exactly it happens, but Taryn either, like, hears something or, like, has a feeling to look under the stairs. Uh-huh. And so she looks there and she finds Nikki. But before they can get to her, Jenna is pulled backward down the hallway. Uh-huh. And so they're, like, trying to figure out who to help, you know. And um, the door closes behind Nikki so they can't get to her. And meanwhile, in the background, the whole time, someone is singing, like, the 
Lizzie Borden took an axe. <laughs> like, just singing the nursery uh-huh. rhyme. But, like, I don't think they can hear it. I think yeah. we can just hear we it. We just hear it. Yeah. It would have been way creepier if they can hear it. I would have been like, oh, my. Right? Like, freaking out, you know? Yeah. Okay, did they? Okay, I'm, I'm not quite understanding. Okay. Do they explain this later? Why does Lizzie want Taryn? Yes. They explain it? Yeah. Later. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll wait. Because um, I'm like, why? Okay. Taryn decides that it's the best idea to get Diana down to the basement and to restrain her. Uh-huh. So they find her and they get her down to the floor and they start duct taping her up. And then the police chief walks into the house because uh-huh. apparently people can come in. They can come in. They and Michael, like, sprints to the back door and tries to open it and he can't. Mm-hmm. So the police chief is just, like, standing there while they're duct taping Diana. <laughs> and then he's like, what's going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> And Taryn, well, officer, obvious. Like, like Taryn's like, we're gonna do an exorcism, and he's like, that's not gonna stop her. This is Taryn's destiny. And you're like, what do you know, what sir? What do you know? What yeah. Man? So they make Taryn. Oh, they take her down to the basement, and they make Taryn leave the room for the exorcism because she's like connected or whatever. Uh huh. So and she's she, alone. Taryn uh, upstairs. Yeah. So she's like uh-huh. sitting there holding the basement door closed because it's like rattling and shaking, and she sees Nikki outside through like the patio doors and she's just kind of like standing there staring and then she stops to look at Taryn and gets hurtled into the pool uh, uh, just by nothing just, just by nothing yeah drowns in the just, pool okay so there it is well because they were like well guys we got a 15 foot pool we gotta you gotta know, use that space. we gotta use the space you yeah. know he goes back to the basement and Michael hears Nikki's voice calling to him so he runs up the stairs but he comes face to face with the woman in blue, uh-huh. and it's her red eyes from the memory. And oh. she literally just stares at him until his eyes bleed and he dies. <laughs> like he just like falls down the stairs <laughs> with his eyes bleeding. And you're like, okay. okay. The, the, what, what demonic powers you somehow got in yeah. death? Like, okay. <laughs> So the exorcism isn't working and Scott is like getting tired and you know, whatever. And the police chief is like, your God can't save you now. There's only one way out of this. And hands Scott his gun. What police chief? What? What is happening? Yeah. I'm (sighs) sorry. Are you wanting him to kill everybody else? Because you do it. No. Blame himself. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You do it. (laughs) So this is day five. Okay. The sun is now up and Taryn is still holding the basement door closed. And then it stops shaking. Uh Uh-huh. So she thinks it o- she thinks it's over and she opens the basement door and goes down. And at that moment she sees Scott shoot himself. So I don't know like what time warp thing is happening. But okay. That's what happens. All right. And she like asks the police chief, police chief like why did you let him do that? blah blah blah. And the police chief is just like you're home now. There's nothing they could do to stop it. And he explains that he was the officer that took her to the orphanage after she was abandoned as a baby. Mhm. Uh-huh. And he was like, but the police has, or not the police, the house has been punishing me ever since. What the fuck okay. does that mean? I hate when they're like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a ghost, it's a ghost, but the house is doing it. Yeah. Okay. And then he says, like, all of your friends died so that you can be home. And she like freaks out and tries to run up the stairs, but the police officer grabs him, or grabs her. Uh huh. And then um, it like cuts to a new scene, and it shows him leading. Taryn and Diana up the stairs, and Diana is, like, sobbing, screaming uncontrollably. Okay. And um, Taryn has her, she has, like, a blanket wrapped around her, and her head is, like, in Diana's shoulder. Uh Uh-huh. So he, like, brings them up the stairs and is leading them out of the house, and they open the door, and someone says, Miss, are you okay? And she pulls her blanket down to reveal her red eyes and says, I'm home now. Oh, so she was to be possessed by Lily. The end. The end. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. What was the point of Diana? Like, what? I guess she she was just the owner. She was the vessel of getting people there, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Okay. So, I have a few notes. Okay. Um, So, obviously, the horror costuming was awful. Awful. Not good at all. I think, like, the best thing that they did was like the death faces yeah like, the jaws were like just like hanging open and like they did that pretty well okay the acting was not great too nope. but like once i figured out that diana was supposed to be fucking weird uh-huh it kind of made more sense that she was fucking weird yeah so you know it was obviously very low budget like bad yeah and there was no like blending of one shot to another like it was like very obvious that they said action and then waited a beat 
And then they started talking. <laughs> and then the next scene was like action. <laughs> and then they started talking. Like it, it didn't flow very well at all. Um, and also the microphones were like all over the place. So like in the same scene, but like with different camera angles, mm-hmm. it would show like the group and they would be talking and it was either a boom mic or like just the camera's microphone mm-hmm. capturing the whole room. But then it would show like a close up of Michael and it was like, his personal mic on his body. <laughs> yeah. But you could tell that it was, like, so bad going back and forth. It was really annoying. <laughs> and then, this isn't about the movie. This is about um, the actor who played Michael. Uh-huh. He's British. And for the most part, he did okay. Uh-huh. But there were so, ma- so many things that just made me wonder that I, like, had to look it up. Yeah. Like, when he was inviting the friend to Nikki's party, he's like, we're going to have a birthday party on the weekend. I was like, American people don't talk like that. No. <laughs> and he also says, like, we're going to go to the store to get food and drink for the party. <laughs> like, who the fuck? What? <laughs> and then he also, like, instead of saying Jenna, Does he would say often mass? say, no. <laughs> um, he would say Jenner. You know how they, like, kind of slur oh. their, like, R into it? Yeah. Yeah. So he would do that a lot. <laughs> but. <laughs> so, yeah, we had drinking. We had drugs. We had college sex. We had college students. Yeah. We had. Death, so, Bloody Mary, yeah. not Bloody Mary, no. Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden. Uh, it was a trip. Oh, man. man. She looked so bad. So bad. She looked so bad. It was bad, so, man. If you want to watch a bad movie, it's not the worst, but it's not a good movie at fucking all. Where did so, you watch it at? On Tubi. Oh, I couldn't I find Tubi. it like, okay. anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it had ads, and um, yeah. yeah, it all probably right, wasn't then. worth the ads. Yeah. But. <laughs> it was a good time. You even have to pay for it, right? Yes, that yeah. is true. So that's American <laughs> Poltergeist, which, like, I feel like the um, oh, definition of Poltergeist, like, that's not it. No. Like, American Exorcism no. or something? I don't know. Like, American Lizzie Borden come to take your body. For like, real. Like, 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 it was really weird. Also, why, why specifically did it have to be American? Like, I mean, I know Lizzie was from America, but, like, that's not... Like, well, yeah, but that's where the house is. Yeah, but, like, so. why did they have to specify... American poltergeist because oh true like you know it's like just, obviously yeah they couldn't have had any other sort of Lizzie Borden kind of esque uh, idea name to it definitely not okay because that would give it away yeah it was a twisty doodle no okay yeah it was a twisty doodle <laughs> I'm just saying like they could have really sat there and like brainstormed anything else oh, like yeah. no no that's what they settled on yeah so because they get like the the american haunting british haunting those ones i get those ones like because yeah. they're i mean they're in their respective places and whatnot yeah the name makes no sense for yeah. that <laughs> and that's not so. what a poltergeist is no that's what i'm saying <laughs> it is not not at all okay so well what what is. what what would you give it how many skulls would you give this? oh boy wait are skulls a good thing or a uh, bad thing uh, like i don't know do other people rate out of skulls I don't know. Oh, we're just thinking we can rate out of schools. Because we okay. do mostly horror movies. So, so then, like, two? Two? <laughs> it was not great. Maybe two and a half. Maybe two and a half. that's pretty generous. <laughs> it was not great. Okay. No. It was very amateur, very low budget. Like, they probably spent more on that spirit Halloween wig yeah. than they did on that movie. So. It was so bad. Like. Yeah. We will definitely try to put pictures up. Yes, that's bad, yeah, man. That's not good. That's not good. Yeah, hopefully next week we will have a different Lizzie Borden movie. Yep. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. And if not, we'll figure something else we'll out. We'll figure something else out. Yeah. So. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks.